name is Aleš Dujček. I work at Red Hat and I come from Czech Republic. And today I will talk about running upstream spacewalk tests using Ansible and Vagrant. Um, this talk will be about these three projects. The first one is Spacewalk. It's upstream project of one of our products and it's also upstream of uh, SUSE manager and our uh, downstream is called Red Hat Supply. It's system management tool that manages large amount of servers. It handles uh, packages and you can schedule updates and uh, uh, some basic configuration management is implemented there. Other two projects are Vagrant and Ansible. The first one of them is a uh, VM management tool. Uh, it helps you manage your VMs with development environment or testing environment and uh, can help you easily start a new virtual machine and destroy it when you don't need it anymore. And Ansible is configuration management tool which takes care about uh, configuration of, of hosts you want to configure and uh, why we uh, want to use Vagrant and Ansible to test spacewalk is uh, that uh, at Red Hat we have a lot of resources uh, which we can use to, to test our products but our community doesn't have uh, access to it. So we want to help them and provide them some tools which they can use to, to help us uh, develop upstream projects and um, make it easier and more comfortable for them to contribute. Uh, testing environment is called Beaker. It's basically a bunch of uh, hardware and virtual machines and we can reserve resources there and, and use it. But yeah, uh, as I said, our community does not have access to our uh, resources. The first one is Vagrant. As I said, it's a virtual man <coughs> machine management tool and its goal is to make it easy to, to start new, new machines and quickly use them and destroy them when you don't need them anymore. Uh, Vagrant app is, is the simple command to, to run new new environment. Then you can connect to, to it with Vagrant SSH a command and then destroy it with Vagrant destroy. It's uh, basically wrapped around uh, many uh, virtualization providers like Libvirt or VirtualBox. Uh, you can use VMware and even Docker, which, which is containers, not, not virtual machines, and supports uh, some configuration options. Uh, it can uh, run shell scripts or, or, or use uh, configuration management software like Chef, Puppet or Ansible uh, to provision your new started environment. Uh, if I list my virtual machines uh, running, there are no. Uh, but if I run Vagrant up, it starts new new machine with Libvirt. It takes some time. And now the, the machine is ready and we can see it, that it's running. We can connect to it and uh, just check what, what system is running there. And when we don't need it anymore, we can destroy it. and it's not running anymore. What Vagrant calls boxes, it's basically snapshot of uh, some virtual machine, which is bundled with some metadata and uh, some basic configuration. There is a repository where you can download Vagrant boxes, the Ubuntu images, uh, 
many more Debian, whatever you need, you can download, download it and use it. Or you can create your own boxes. You just need three files. The first one of them is box image, which is basically the image with installed uh, environment. Then vagrant file, I, I will uh, talk about it later. It's a configuration for Vagrant and the metadata JSON file, which is uh, in slide. There are just few information about size in gigabytes and uh, file format of, of the box image. Then you can uh, tar it and, and distribute it as your own box. And Vagrant file is basically a Ruby script because Vagrant is uh, written in Ruby and uh, it holds some configuration of, of environment you want to run. So if I uh, use vagrant app command, it finds the vagrant file and according to configuration runs the environment. In this example, it would run CentOS image and uh, after booting up the system, it would run the shell script. Uh, it would uh, update system and in installs uh, HTTPD service. This is list of my boxes, which are ready to use. And this is a configuration vagrant file to run CentOS and then update one package. And uh, this is a little bit of cheating. I'm not running vagrant app but Vagrant provision and it, it means that I have already running the virtual machine and I'm skipping the booting process which takes time and I'm only running the provisioning scripts. So it, it now uh, runs the yum update uh, of the package. Now it's time for Ansible, which is configuration management tool. And all you need to use Ansible on your systems is to have SSH access to them and have Python installed on the systems. Basically, you can uh, run single commands with uh, Ansible. That example, Ansible localhost minus mping means that Ansible would run uh, on my localhost machine module, which is called ping, and it only checks if uh, it's, uh, it's working. For uh, more complex uh, configuration, you need to write uh, so-called playbooks, which are sets of uh, configuration tasks, which are then run on, on your hosts. And inventories are definitions of your target systems where you want to run playbooks. And there are a lot of modules available for you to use. Uh, basically, every task is handled by one of the modules, and module is some Python code which uh, do the configuration for you. So there are modules for package manipulation, like yum update or dnf update or apt get update on different uh, distributions, and there are modules for uh, manipulation with files and. Uh, with working with uh, cloud providers like uh, Amazon or Google. There is a lot of uh, resources ready to use, or you can write your own modules. Well, playbooks for Ansible are basically uh, files in YAML format, it, as is shown on the right of the slide. Uh, it specifies hosts where you want to run the playbook and a list of tasks. Uh, for example, there is an installation of, of Git, which is handled by YAM module, and you want to have a Git package present on the system. So this is the syntax, and the name is optional and good to use to make it more readable. And then you can run it just by ansible-playbook and the name of the playbook. And it would read uh, everything from the uh, playbook file and, and runs the configuration. Uh, if you're running uh, the playbook on more uh, hosts, 
at the same time it uh, is run in parallel and you can specify how many hosts at, at, at the time are configured. And uh, inventory is filed in another format specifying a list of hosts uh, and then you can limit some configuration to only part of them, like web servers would be configured in another way than DB servers or uh, the first example doesn't belong to any any group. And you can still use all to, to run configuration on all of them. So this is just a hook command on, on my machine Fedora. Uh, that minus u vagrant means that I want to run it as vagrant user. And this is example of playbook specifying that I want to run it on a Fedora host. It's a group containing only one uh, virtual machine running on, on my computer, or which was running at the time when I recorded it. And it specifies that I want to run some uh, roles, and I have only one of them, and it's called grab. And roles are, are basically uh, lists of tasks, so you don't have one long playbook and you can split it into reusable roles and uh, after after all, all the roles are run uh, are executed two more tasks uh, the first one of them is just shell script uh, which echoes hello world and the register means that the result of the task will be saved to variable called hello and the, the later task debug just prints the standard output of, of the task. Well, let's see how uh, roles look like. Uh, they are stored in, in a roles directory and then uh, there are some subdirectories called tasks and handlers. In tasks is, are specified the tasks which are run when you use the role and handlers are uh, special tasks which can be run uh, when you want to uh, react to some actions. Uh, <coughs> so this is how the grab role task look like. It just states that I want DNF to install grab and the next task is to upgrade grab to the latest version. Uh, both of them need sudo and uh, the notify means that when the upgrade uh, task is run uh, then will be run the handler called the grab upgraded and if uh, upgrade grab won't be run uh, notify won't be run either okay and let's see two handlers it's just another task well, and now we can play the playbook and see what, what would happen. Well, it failed because I forget to specify to use a vagrant user which has access to, to that machine. Well, and now Ansible uh, runs the install task but says OK. It, it means that it did nothing and the upgrade task was changed. It means that the grab was really updated. And then was run the shell script from the uh, playbook and in the end is the notified, uh, it's, it's the handler uh, after the upgrading grab. And if I run it again, then both install and upgrade uh, won't do anything because it's already at the latest version. It just says OK, OK for both tasks. And how to use Vagrant and Ansible together? You just need to specify to uh, run some playbook in Vagrant file. So it's really easy. You just need a few, few lines and, and 
let's say, specify the file name of the playbook. And this is what I need to, to run our tests. So I can uh, have a prepared environment and then prepared playbook in Ansible to, to run our test to test spacewalk. Oh, this takes some time. I will probably skip it a little bit just to see what happened. It started the virtual machine and now is uh, running the Ansible playbook, which is preparing environment to, to run spacewalk test. I need to uh, install uh, EPEL repository and install some RPM. Then clone the repository with tests. There is one additional test which I copied to the machine. And now is uh, the test running. Well, and in the end it printed the results of the test. It was really quick and uh, we can see anything except that uh, it passed. So this is the Vagrant file. And playbook. There are tasks to install the EPEL repository. Uh, the install RPM dependencies, it's quite interesting. You can specify a list of items and then run the task for every of the items. Uh, it uses syntax uh, like Django in its templates. It's called Jinja2, I think. So you specify uh, the variable name in double brackets and uh, the state present means I want Yam to install the dependencies. Uh, our tests are uh, written uh, in Beakerlib, it's a shell testing library. We, uh, I will show you later how it works. Uh, the RHN setup uh, is packaged to uh, register system to spacewalk. Uh, and space CMD, it's a command to run uh, API on spacewalk. There are tasks to get to uh, clone Git repository upload some file to the machine. Uh, the, the run test, it's uh, the, the test what, what was run. There is some configuration for the test. Uh, this uh, sets the environment variables. So it's uh, credentials to spacewalk and address of the spacewalk server. And the last uh, task uh, reports the results of the test. And this is how the test look like. It's, it's shell script, as I said, and there are some functions which defines steps in the test. Uh, that rl run function calls the argument and uh, checks the output value and uh, assert it to zero, and if it's not non-zero, it marks the task as failed. So the task are uh, download SSL certificate of Spacewalk, then register to Spacewalk, schedule installation of package, which is VIM editor, and it checks that uh, before the test there was no VIM and after that test it was installed. I was working with a running instance of Spacewalk and I was running client test against that Spacewalk but I can, uh, I have an Ansible playbook to install Spacewalk, for example. So I can run Vagrant app and it installs Spacewalk after booting the machine. It takes a lot of time. I wanted just a simple example. Uh, the question was uh, if I run uh, the Spacewalk in Vagrant 2 or, or, or not. So uh, I had a special Spacewalk running and use only client registered to Spacewalk in Vagrant in this case. The output of, of the test, which was really quick in the previous... Yeah, it, 
there, there is, for example, the uh, scheduling uh, installation of package on on the system, and then th there is a RH and check called, which uh, prints a lot of output because I specified verbose mode. So this was RH and check, and it uh, pick up uh, tasks from Spacewalk server on the client. And this is how the test uh, protocol looks like. Uh, it's just a text file describing every step and saying if it fails or not. Maybe you can read it. Uh, this is CentOS 7 uh, channel. It's something like repository. Or, or from client's point, point of view, it's repository, and I put there only a few packages as a demo, and uh, the client was subscribed to this channel and uh, was able to consume uh, RPMs from there and install the VIM. Uh, this is the registered system in Spacewalk. It says that there are updates available and and it's one package to update. Uh, this is details of packages on that system. And if we scroll down, we can see that the package was really installed there. Oh, well, the question was uh, that Ansible can run VMs and why to use both of them. And uh, the test itself could be Ansible. Uh, so the test was not in Ansible because we already have a lot of tests. Uh, they are not published yet, but we were discussing it. And we already have something on GitHub for our community. So we want to reuse what we have. And uh, the Vagrant and Ansible question, uh, I wanted to try both of the projects. So well, uh, the question is about what exactly the test do. The, the test uh, runs uh, VM on, on my machine, which then registered to Spacewalk. Spacewalk is able to schedule uh, installation of uh, VMs too, but uh, I run it manually on my machine and then use it as client to Spacewalk. So what was done was that I created a new VM on my notebook and then that VM was registered to Spacewalk server and installed package from the Spacewalk server. Thank you. And